NFL kicker Brandon McManus accused of sexually assaulting two women on flight to London. An NFL player has been accused of sexually assaulting two women on a flight to London last year. Former Jacksonville Jaguars kicker Brandon McManus has been named in a lawsuit by women identified only as Jane Doe I and Jane Doe II, which was filed last Friday in Duval County, Florida, according to reports. The women allege that the Jaguars did not provide a safe working environment for staff on the flight, which took the team to the English capital for the NFL's annual London Games last autumn. They accuse McManus, who now plays for the Washington Commanders, of rubbing and grinding up against them during the transatlantic flight. Jane Doe I said the 32-year-old sportsman tried to kiss her, and Jane Doe II said McManus smirked and walked away after she confronted him about grinding on her. McManus's lawyer responded to the legal action, which is seeking more than $1 million in damages and a jury trial, by calling the allegations absolutely fictitious and demonstrably false. We intend to aggressively defend Brandon's rights and integrity and clear his name by showing what these claims truly are, an extortion attempt, Brett R. Galloway of McLaughlin and Stern said in a statement. The Jaguars said in a statement, we're aware of the complaint, and we acknowledge the significance of the claims. As we continue to look into the matter, it bears emphasizing that we insist on an organization built by people who represent our community and game with the highest character and class. McManus left the Jaguars after last season and has since joined the Washington Commanders on a one-year contract worth $3.6 million. Earlier today, we were made aware of the civil lawsuit filed on May 24 against Brandon McManus. We take allegations of this nature very seriously and are looking into the matter. We have been in communication with the league office and Brandon's representation, and will reserve further comment at this time," the commander said in a statement. Person dies at Skip Hall Airport in after becoming trapped in running plane engine. A person has died at Skip Hall Airport in Amsterdam after becoming trapped in a running aircraft engine, according to police. The Dutch airline KLM said the aircraft was bound for Billund in Denmark, carrying passengers on flight KL-1341. In a statement, the company said, We are currently taking care of the passengers and employees who witnessed the incident at Skip Hall. The circumstances are currently under investigation. Dutch media reported that the aircraft's engine was running when the person was killed, indicating the plane was due to take off. A Royal Military Police investigation has not yet identified who the person was, a spokesperson said. The spokesperson added that it was too early to say whether this was an incident or a form of suicide. He also added that all passengers and crew, many of whom witnessed what happened, had safely left the plane. Posting on X, Skip Hall Airport described the incident as horrible and said, Our thoughts go out to the relatives and we care for the passengers and colleagues who witnessed this. The flight to Billund, scheduled for 2.25 p.m., departed at 2.59 p.m., according to Skip Hall's website. Last year, a Texas airport worker died after being ingested into an engine at San Antonio International Airport in June. While another worker, in Alabama, was pulled into an engine in January 2023. NATO's biggest drill since the Cold War is a warning for Putin to stay away. In a dusty clearing in Lithuania, NATO is rolling out the big guns. Leopard 2 tanks fire their rounds with a deafening thud, while Puma fighting vehicles add to the eerie chorus, accompanied by the buzz of helicopter blades. The firepower on display is the crescendo of the alliance's biggest military training exercise since the Cold War, led by the Germans and taking place a few miles from the Lithuanian border with Belarus. The aim is to show how NATO can defend Europe's eastern flank from invasion, offer reassurance to allies and a warning to President Putin. Today's exercise sends a clear message, a message of deterrence to Russia, said General Karsten Brewer, Germany's chief of defense. About 90,000 troops from 32 member states have taken part in drills as part of the steadfast defender exercise over the past six months on land, sea and in the air. And as Ukraine struggles on the real battlefield, the war games on the eastern flank have added significance. This is NATO's front line if the war in Ukraine were to bubble over. 
The Baltic states including Lithuania say Russia is their biggest threat to security. It's why Germany will permanently station 5,000 troops in the area in the next few years. It's a welcome deterrent, according to Colonel Romantis Jarmolovicius from the Lithuanian Armed Forces, who has fought the Russians before. Last time, he was a student battling the Soviet Union for his country's independence. I remember perfectly the system that we lived in. I don't want those times to come back and I don't want my children to live in such a country as the Soviet Union," he said. Russia's invasion of Ukraine also shocked Germany into action. This is the first year since the 1990s that the European giant has met the NATO alliance target to spend 2% of its gross domestic product on defense. Russian aggression has made defense a priority for the government, which announced a special $108 billion fund shortly after the war broke out. But years of underfunding mean now Germany is against the clock to make a military short of ammunition, weapons and troops fit for war. We have five to eight years when the reconstitution of Russia forces is on a level that an attack against NATO territory might be possible. For me as military, five to eight years means I have to be ready in five years, explains General Brewer. And on the training field, Germany was keen to show it could defend its neighbors with an impressive range of weapons. This time they were just drills, but if any NATO members come under attack the message is clear and united, there will be no playing games. Dine and Dash a pair who left restaurants without paying bills worth $1,300 are jailed. A couple who left a number of restaurants in the South Wales area without paying bills totaling more than $1,300 have been jailed. Anne McDonough, 39 years old, and Bernard McDonough, 41 years old, previously pleaded guilty to five counts of fraud. Anne McDonough also admitted four counts of theft and one count of obstructing or resisting a constable in the execution of duty. The pair, from the Sandfields area of Port Talbot, were sentenced at Swansea Crown Court on Wednesday. She was handed a 12-month prison sentence, while he was jailed for eight months. Newly opened restaurant Bella Chow in Swansea alleged in a Facebook post that a family left the premises without paying their $417 bill. The post was shared thousands of times on social media. Several other restaurants in the South Wales area also posted about similar experiences, including River House and La Casona. A previous court hearing heard the unpaid bills totaled $1,482 across five restaurants. Judge Paul Thomas Casey said the defendants had have set out on a deliberate course of sustained dishonesty. You would cynically and brazenly leave without paying. You would order the most expensive items on the menu such as steaks, even for your children who did not eat them, in the full knowledge that you had no intention of paying for them," he said. He said the pair had a, a well-drilled and tested method for avoiding paying and had exploited their children. You'd obviously coach them in advance to run away when you'd left them behind as some form of security," he said. The judge described it as a criminality for criminality's sake. Apart from the greed element, you each got a buzz from what you were able to get away with. He said the kind of losses the restaurants faced were not easily absorbed in the current climate. He concluded that Ms. McDonough was the leading figure in this spate of offending and was a fluent and practiced liar. On one occasion, on April 19, they attended Bella Chow Restaurant in Swansea. And McDonough's payment method was declined and she left to get cash, leaving her son at the restaurant before he left a short while later. The boy received a call and said words to the effect of, Oh no. Really? I'll be there now, said Jayovan Cangelosi, owner of Bella Chow. The business's Swansea branch had only been open a few weeks at the time and he said business had at that point been slow and difficult. Our restaurant has always been a laid-back, relaxing place for people to attend and I want that to stay the same. We thought about spending more money on our security, but this comes at a great cost," he added. Mr. Cangelosi said he was confused and upset as to why they do this. The court heard Bernard McDonough had 27 previous convictions for 40 offenses, while in McDonough had 18 previous convictions for 36 offenses.
dozens of howler monkeys drop dead from the trees as heatwave rages in Mexico. Mexico is so hot that howler monkeys have been dropping dead out of the trees. At least 83 of the primates, who are known for their roaring calls, were found dead in the Gulf Coast state of Tabasco where temperatures are forecast to surpass 45 Celsius this week. Others were rescued by residents, including five that were rushed to a local vet who battled to save them. They arrived in critical condition, with dehydration and fever. They were as limp as rags. It was heatstroke, said Dr. Sergio Valenzuela. A nationwide drought and heat waves have sent temperatures soaring across much of the country. In a statement over the weekend, Tabasco's Civil Protection Agency attributed the deaths to dehydration. A source from the agency said that monkeys have been confirmed dead in three municipalities of the state. In a forest outside Camelcalco, Tabasco, volunteers collected the corpses of mantled howler monkeys that died from high temperatures, before placing buckets of water and fruit to try to stave off more deaths. The mantled howler monkey is classified as vulnerable on the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, red list. It is because the heat is so strong. I've been visiting the states for a long time and I have never felt it as much as now. So, yes, we have to care for the animals and yes, we are going to do it, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador, who is from Tabasco, when asked about the primate deaths. Wildlife biologist Gilberto Pozo counted about 83 of the animals dead or dying on the ground under trees who have died from heat-related causes between the start of Mexico's heat season on March 17 and May 11. By May 9 at least nine cities in Mexico had set temperature records, with Ciudad Victoria, in the border state of Tamaulipas, clocking a broiling 47 Celsius. This is a sentinel species. It is telling us something about what is happening with climate change, Mr. Pozo said, referring to the canary in a coal mine effect where one species can say a lot about an ecosystem. This is the inside of the home alone house that is being offered for sale. The house famously used when Kevin McAllister was left home alone at Christmas is on sale. The five-bed, six-bathroom mansion in Winnetka, Illinois has been put on the market for a staggering $5.25 million. It is the first time since 2012 that the property has been put on the market, according to American estate agents, Zillow. Since the release of the 1990 classic film directed by Chris Columbus, the house has gone under extreme renovation. Posting a walkthrough of the interiors, estate agents the Don McKenna Group said the current owners have doubled the living space with the addition of a large conservatory and built a state-of-the-art basketball court. The house, described by the company as one of the most famous houses in the world, also features two living rooms, a large kitchen, a three-car garage and the unforgettable staircase, which a 10-year-old Macaulay Culkin rode down on a sledge. Previously, Home Alone fans were given the chance to stay at the house in 2021, when Airbnb listed the property for an exclusive one-night-only stay. Similar properties that have been featured in films or on television have also reached eye-watering prices when put up for sale. In February this year, the West London home of music legend Freddie Mercury went up for sale for offers in excess of $38 million. While the house from the beloved horror film Halloween went on the market for $1.8 million in 2021 and in 2020 the famous Lock Keepers Cottages home where the Channel 4 show Big Breakfast was based had an asking price of $7.3 million.